one quarter of Canadian ridings have absolutely zero problem with vote splitting or its potential in this upcoming election. In the by-election in Burnaby South, Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson, former host of the 700 Club in Canada, who was ousted after transgender activists protested that she interviewed a transgender person who was against the transgender agenda. She tried to run for the Conservatives twice and was not allowed to, and ended up running for the People's Party instead, where the door was open. And she took 10% of the vote. In advance of that, there was this article from McLean's. It says, in a recent interview with American conservative commentator Ben Shapiro, Harper warned against allowing a party to develop an alternative to its right. I had a rule. I always said, if I had one or two percent to the right of me, that's fine. But if you get five percent or 10 percent or 20 percent, or infamously with Hillary Clinton, 45 or 46 percent, and you're calling them fringe, there's something wrong with you. I think it's important for the Conservative Party to know that in abandoning things that really matter to the voters who believe in them most, that they are making a mistake in reaching for the median voter in trying to be simply the alternative to Trudeau and getting that by not really standing for anything, that is a problem. And for those of us who live in the rural west of Canada, that doesn't represent our values. You have to be something more than not Trudeau. I want to show you 95 ridings where based on the 2015 election results, you can vote for the People's Party without any concern of getting Justin Trudeau elected. Many of us want him out and it would be a very good thing for the country. Vote for the People's Party because you can know for certain that it will not affect Justin Trudeau getting elected and the higher the percentage of people that vote for the things the People's Party believes in, reforming immigration, drastically changing equalization. Those are the things that we need to see happen. Building pipelines. Maxime Bernier has said he would use the Constitution to overrule Quebec and BC to build a pipeline, which is a stronger statement than Andrew Scheer has been willing to make. I went into the 2015 election results and put together a list where even if you split the vote in half, no other party would win minimize it to its greatest extent and there still would not be any different result based on the last election. I'm going to start with the ones that the NDP and Greens have. You could have divided Elizabeth May's vote in half. She had 54.4 percent and the second place and there are three other ridings that are like that between the NDP. One is in Quebec, Rosemont, Le Petit Petrie, Ontario's Wind Windsor West and in BC Skeena, Bulkley Valley where Nathan Cullen won. Now, let's look at the Liberal ones. Again, the Liberals were so dominant, they are probably not going to be toppled in these ridings. Five of them are in Newfoundland, and in Newfoundland there had been the famous campaign Anything But Conservative. And the reason why is that the Conservative Premier, Danny Williams, had assurances from the Harper Conservatives that they were going to exclude resource revenues from Newfoundland in the equalization formula. Well, that was not upheld. What the Conservatives did do is they decided to increase equalization and say it was a better deal than it had ever been. In fact, the Conservatives made equalization even more egregious than it had been before. And that's why you will not see the Conservative Party advocating for changes in equalization. Because they made it this bad. The People's Party is the only one. Maxime Bernier has said that he would radically change equalization because he says it is unfair to the provinces that are paying into it and it also is a poverty trap for the provinces receiving it. They leave their resources in the ground and they don't lower their taxes to spur their economy because they know the minute they do they'll get less money from Ottawa. So why would they do it? That's why we have a system of 20 billion dollars equalization, Quebec gets 13 billion, our remaining four provinces get the seven billion that's left, and then BC, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Newfoundland, and apparently Ontario now get zero. You know, we could balance the budget if we did nothing but take equalization from 20 billion down to five billion. That's it, instant balanced budget. In Newfoundland, Avalon, Bonavista, Beer and Trinity, 
Dakota Bay, Central Notre Dame, Labrador, Long Range Mountains, they are all liberal strongholds that are not going to be toppled, likely. In PEI, three of the four ridings are that way, including Wayne Easters, Sean Casey, and Lawrence McCauley's. Nova Scotia, there's a whole ton of them. You might recognize Bill Casey's name, Jeff Regan's. Scott Bryson isn't running again, but he was in that number. Three of them in New Brunswick. There are many, many Quebec ridings as well. Mark Garneau's, Justin Trudeau's. Stéphane Dion won't be running again, but his was one of them. And then in Ontario, we also have quite a few. David McGinty's in Ontario, Navdeep Baines, Judy Scrows, Bill Blair's, Bill Morneau's, Adam Vaughn's, Carolyn Bennett's. And in BC, there's five of them. North Vancouver, Surrey Newton, Vancouver Centre, Vancouver Quadra, West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky, and also Yukon, where Larry Bagnell had 54% of the vote. Now I want to go to the conservative ones. In these ridings, I think it's the most relevant, what I'm talking about, because people lean to the right in these ridings very strongly. And I think the people that lean to the right might want to lean farther to the right and vote for the People's Party. There's actually been some speculation that Maxi Bernier wouldn't win his seat. That is ridiculous. He won with 59% of the vote last time. And you can see this chart on the left. Adam Vayu of the Liberals had 22% and the NDP had 10. Stephen Blaney, he won with 51% of the vote. And there's another two ridings in Quebec that are like that. Look at Portage Lisker, Candice Bergen. She has 61% of the vote. You can split 61 in half. You're going to get 30.5, and that is still more than the Liberals got last time at 26. If you're living in Portage Lisker, you do not have to worry that voting for the People's Party of Canada is going to jeopardize anything. In fact, it's only going to help. Because if the sheer government forms power, all of these ridings that have been overwhelmingly conservative, they've taken for granted. Well, maybe a little competition is going to get a little bit of government money, too after sheer forms power. The People's Party, it would be great to say that we could form power, but that's not going to happen in the short term. Our role is to have a vibrant opposition that is going to keep the Conservatives that have abandoned themselves to the middle and try not to stand for too much, try not to offend anyone, to keep that government moored in what should be the priorities for Canadians. So let's look at Saskatchewan. Battlefords Lloyd Minster, Jerry Ritz, in the 2015 election had 61% of the vote. You could split that in half, that's 30.5. That's almost twice as much as what the NDP and the Liberals got in that election. Rosemary Falk won in a by-election and it shouldn't be that much different for her. Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek, that's the area southwest of Saskatoon, Rosetown Outlook. Kelly Block, 65%. And again, that is just far, far more than the alternatives. Cypress Hills Grasslands, where I'm running, and the incumbent David Anderson is not. David got 69% of the vote in 2015. You can divide the conservative vote in four and still have more than anyone else. If you want to vote for me, there is no downside. There is only an upside because I am going to be representing no carbon tax, a balanced budget, changed equalization, pipelines built, great stuff. Moose Jaw, Lake Center, Lanigan. Tom Lequiski, 55%. I don't know if Dustin's running again, but he was second place at 24%, and the Liberals were third at 18. Again, you can divide 55 into 2, that's 27.5, and that's more than anyone else. Surus Moose Mountain, the Weyburn Estevan area, 70% for the Conservative candidate. 14% for the NDP that was in second, and 13 for the Liberals. I don't think that the NDP and Liberals are going to get more in these ridings. Jagmeet Singh is not rallying people to him. There's people defecting in the Maritimes to the Greens. The Liberals. People are not enamored with Justin Trudeau. The shine left a long time ago. He won't even get this much. There is no worry for anyone who wants to vote PPC in Weyburn and Estevan, and there are many people that do, and they should. They should be voting for the PPC, because the strongest statement for pipelines has come from Maxime Bernier. And you cannot have a 70% vote jeopardized by a 14% vote. It's just math. 
Kathy Wagenthal in Yorkton, Melville. This was a reform riding in the past with Jerry Breitkreitz, who was very much against the gun registry. I have to think that there's some people there that would like the principled alternative of the People's Party as well. But Kathy had 59% of the vote last time, and that's almost three times as much as the second place, which was not the Liberals, it was the NDP. Now, there are many ridings in Alberta that are like this. I'm not forming charts for them because I work full time. I'm campaigning. This is my harvest. A salute to all of you who are in the harvest fields right now across Canada. I'm just going to list these. Banff Airdrie, Blake Richards, he had 63% of the vote. Battle River Crowfoot, Kevin Sorensen with 81% of the vote. Okay, Kevin isn't running again, but again, anyone who voted for the People's Party is not going to put Trudeau in the seat. That's ridiculous. Bow River, that's Martin Shields, 77%. Calgary Heritage, Stephen Harper with 64 The next person who ran was Bob Benson. He won even more, 71%. Calgary Midnapore was Jason Kenney. Stephanie Cusey's in there. Calgary Nose Hill is Michelle Rempel, 60%. Calgary Shepherd, this guy. I don't even know how to say his last name, but he got 66%. Edmonton, Wetaskiwin, Mike Late, Foothills, John Barlow, Fort McMurray, Cold Lake, Grand Prairie, Mackenzie, Chris Workentin, 73% of the vote. John Barlow at 76. Lakeland, Shannon Stubbs, 73%. Lethbridge, Rachel Harder, 57%. Medicine Hat, Carson Warner with Jim Hillier, 69%. Peace River, Westlock. Arnold Viersen, 69%. Red Deer Lacombe, Blake Culkin, 71%. Red Deer Mountain View, Earl Dreeshen, 74%. You know, these people are going to get a run for their money because Paul Mitchell and Laurelyn Tyler Thompson are running in these areas and they every bit deserve strong consideration and your vote. St. Albert Edmonton, Michael Cooper. This is very interesting to me because... At 45%, 45 point whatever, it was just marginally more than half for the 22 point something that rounds up to 23 that the second place person got. So Michael Cooper, whom Andrew Shear kicked off of the Justice Committee because he called out a person who was trying, a witness who was trying to say that conservatives were responsible for mass shootings, which was ridiculous. The testimony was actually expunged from the record. That's crazy. Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, Garnet Genuis, 64%. Sturgeon River Parkland, Rona Ambrose, 70%. Yellowhead, Jim Eglinski, 72%. And in BC, Prince George, Peace River, Bob Zimmer, 53% of the vote. Second place is 25. So you put all those together. And you have 33 conservative ridings, 58 liberal ridings, 3 NDP ridings, 1 Green Party riding, where you could split the vote in half and no one else would win. And that is 28% of the 338 ridings in Canada. So, something to think about. I encourage you to vote with your convictions in this election. This is a very pivotal election. But there's more to governing a great country and advancing good policy than just not being Justin Trudeau.